We're not economists, but we're going to pretend to be for, for a little while. Well, it's interesting because I think a lot of speakers mm -hmm. throughout this conference have been talking about you know, the talent, mm -hmm. various other elements. And so, yeah, I think it's an interesting topic to uh, mm -hmm. start to close out the day with. Yeah. But yeah, tell us uh, more about yourself uh, first. Uh, so I've been in the games industry about 20 years, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Moved to Canada in 2010. So interestingly, I'm actually here courtesy of the Canadian government. So I would like to say you know, thanks to those guys for bringing me down to the show. Mm -hmm. um, had the experience of building a, quite a large mobile studio up in Vancouver. Uh, grew to about 180 people working on a bunch of different games, uh, including the Iron Maiden game. So I thought I'd wear a shirt with a couple of my favorite things on it. You know, it's got the band, it's got Canada. Mm -hmm. A couple of things close to my heart, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So unfortunately, Roadhouse hit the skids, I guess, in the middle of 16, 2016, mm -hmm. uh, even though all the games are continuing on pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. So I decided to take a step back. I mm -hmm. uh, wanted to spend some time still connected to the industry, so uh, I took over at DigiBC. Mm -hmm. uh, so DigiBC is the industry association uh, for video games, uh, animation companies, and visual effects companies up in British Columbia, Canada. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that really sort of allowed me to stay close to the industry, uh, mm -hmm. and also gave me a sort of inner sort of insight into mm -hmm. the inner workings of how mm -hmm. governments and various jurisdictions are starting to. Mm -hmm. look at the video games industry and really want to put effort into growing, mm -hmm. you know, clusters. And obviously, uh, the Consul General this morning, mm -hmm. uh, Rana Sarkar, mm -hmm. you know, he was very mm -hmm. uh, eloquent in expressing Canada's support for video games mm -hmm. uh, as an industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so it's been a really fun year. And in the last few months, uh, I've really started to focus in back on a couple of startups. So, mm -hmm. you know, splitting my time between the nonprofit uh, relationship with the government and then mm -hmm. growing a couple of startups. Uh -huh. yeah. So uh, starting a game company in your region, um, you know, uh, uh, how, how would you say that is like uh, compared to start trying to start it in other places, trying to start with something, say, in Silicon Valley or whatever? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I think because of some of the comments that uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the people who've been on this stage have been making, you know, mm -hmm. we've had some conversations at the reception last night. Um, asking guys who are here that exact question. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the key differences for me certainly is, you know, as Rana said this morning, you know, the Canadian government very supportive of the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and that's at a federal level, it's at a provincial level throughout the country. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I think the interesting thing is, you know, when you say where are the game jobs, well technically the answer is anywhere where somebody wants to make a game. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, they have an internet connection. And I think that what what makes it very interesting is how do you then take that sort of natural impetus to want to make games and then really foster that? Um, and obviously, the answer to that is multifaceted, right? Some of it's mm -hmm. tax incentives, some mm -hmm. of it's trying to create uh, an investment environment, mm -hmm. um, some of it's about affordability, some of it's about, you know, sort of a broader innovation culture, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I look at Canada, I think, yeah, you know, a lot of those boxes are getting ticked. Mm -hmm. Obviously, in Silicon Valley, there's a there's a really great funding environment. Mm -hmm. You know, is it the best funding environment for creative content? You know, that's a whole different panel discussion, I guess. But uh -huh. yeah. you know, from our perspective, we found it uh, at least with Roadhouse, it was relatively uh, easy to grow. I mean, you know, you could argue maybe we even grew too quickly, um, but the talent was certainly there. Um, the support from the government, uh, both in the form of incentive and then. Uh, help with international business and all these kinds of things are there, right? So, um, never really having started a games company in Silicon Valley, you know, mm -hmm. I've only got a limited amount of data mm -hmm. to compare that to. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, somebody said to me yesterday, it's really refreshing to see a government that will actually go out of its way to uh, mm -hmm. embrace and promote uh, well, video having, games. Having traveled industry. around the world for, to, to look at a lot of game companies or talk yeah. to a lot of game companies, uh, I feel like the American government is the only one that doesn't care about game jobs right now. Yeah, no, it's interesting. <laughs> and, uh, you know, for the last, I guess, 12 months, uh, mm -hmm. particularly with DGBC, mm -hmm. you know, we were engaged, just sort of speaking from personal experience, engaged with our provincial government up in BC talking about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, why they should care about game jobs. And mm -hmm. you said yesterday, I think, in your mm -hmm. intro, uh, you know, as the father of daughters mm -hmm. or the father of kids, mm -hmm. you know, we want to create an environment in which they grow up, in which our industry is a great place to work. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, these jurisdictions that are around the world now recognize that the skill set, the mindset actually that mm -hmm. come with uh, people who are really good at building video games mm -hmm. actually has much broader application in a innovation culture and a lot of sort of innovations that are set to change the world really get their start in games, right? Mm -hmm. 
So I think it's very surprising. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you'd have to ask somebody else for their opinion as to why it is uh -huh. specifically yeah. that the U.S. is mm -hmm. currently less than supportive of the industry. I don't know. You know, we're still a sleeping giant, or I don't know. Um, yeah, I hope so. But um, uh, yeah, I think uh, um, you know the the the. I, w I wish there were more numbers for us to actually see how all those jobs are changing in different regions and, and going up. But Indeed.com does do uh, some periodic surveys of uh, where all the job postings are right. that uh, they can find and uh, uh, what, what kind they are. So they, they can find the game job postings in the world and uh, rank them by either, say, country or by city. And um, yeah, uh, their last report on the, the world showed that the American cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles, they're actually creating jobs that are at a rate in the teens. They, they were not in the top 10. Right. right. The, the top uh, city in the world was near Seoul for the most game uh, job postings. Being created, yeah. Uh, different countries like you know, Canada and Spain were um, actually creating more, more jobs. It's very interesting. And I don't, I don't know... Um, you know, my, one of my theories is that, say, mobile games um, kind of flattened the world, uh, sort of restarted the whole opportunity, disrupted, you know, a lot of things that came before and created a lot of jobs almost anywhere in the world. Right. right. Well, you know, I think that's where the, mm -hmm. the double-edged sword comes in. As I said, you know, mm -hmm. I think if you have the desire to make games in a, in a PC now, you can get into the, mm -hmm. at least the activity of, of creating games. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because the activity is so transferable from a geographical location, that's why mm -hmm. you know, jurisdictions that want to foster that growth and really support that, uh, that cluster or that environment, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very important there, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. clearly, you know, when you look at Canada over the last 10, 15 years, uh, you know, it was able to create pretty much from a very you know, small beginning. Uh, you know, I guess now Montreal's probably the number one Center for Game Development in North America. Mm -hmm. um, so clearly, you know, this combination of, of tax incentives and various other things that are going on can have the effect of really creating a very robust cluster that I think is going to have a long-term economic value for mm -hmm. for many, many years. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think you know it's very interesting to look at that. In some ways, I, I see this as all good, uh, but I also see uh, you know Donald Trump. Uh, you know, sort of uh, entering into the picture here and talking about trade wars with different countries. Right, right. And um, uh, I don't know where that's going to go. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I don't know. Whether, Again, it's, whether it's whether interesting. Whether it affects games. There, there was some discussion this morning about whether China might be affected uh, by in games uh, by that direction, I guess. Well, uh, and also I think, you know, the other question that we will, again, collectively I guess have to answer over the next five to ten years is just this increasing amount of distributed teams, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, one of the themes that's come up throughout this conference is blockchain in gaming, mm -hmm. uh, but I think even just in terms of managing things like mm -hmm. remote teams and distributed teams and what happens from a you know tax mm -hmm. perspective and income, perspective, all these sorts of things, mm -hmm. you know, these are questions that, again, you know, I would say uh, when we talk to the government specifically, and you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, tax credit, tax incentive. Mm -hmm. That's really a race to the bottom. It's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. But you know, we are, we're in the habit of, of saying that it's actually a race to the top because if you if you collect that mind and matter within that jurisdiction, mm -hmm. then I think you know there's going to be long-term economic value, mm -hmm. you know, be derived from that. Not only just because of the value of the games that can be created, but because of all of the innovative companies that spin out from having a strong games cluster. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, so then when you look at saying, okay, well. Do I need my entire team in this location? You know, if I have mm -hmm. Mind and Matter here and I hold my IP over here and I've got my developers over here, mm -hmm. you know, isn't that the best way to do things, right? And so I think, mm -hmm. interestingly, when you look at uh, mm -hmm. sort of more protectionist policies with mm -hmm. a much more sort of rigid sense of the trade border, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. going to be interesting to see how that pans out. It's a very interdependent world now where, well, all exactly. the, you know, you could shoot at one yeah, thing but sure. hit something else yeah. if you want to. Yeah, and with that global marketplace, I mean, you just mentioned the idea that because mobile games came and me mechanisms of distribution was suddenly democratized for, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, a broader set of folks, I guess, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that did have the effect of making, you know, uh, career in video games accessible to a lot more people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know when we did a call earlier about this topic, you know, we were mm -hmm. talking a little bit about how, uh, you know, going back to sort of a music reference that, you know, indie games now in some ways is a, is one of the key kind of expressions of individuality mm -hmm. or whatever in emerging markets. And mm -hmm. so, 
you know, I think that's also very exciting when mm -hmm. we look at where are the interesting clusters going to emerge, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, there was some interesting work that Indeed.com also did about uh, you know some of the the new areas uh, where um, there were regional advantages, right? right. So uh, virtual reality um, was creating the most jobs uh, in you know Seattle, San Francisco, and Los Angeles, right? right? And uh, the rest of the world was um, was uh, catching up. Yeah, right? and. Uh, it, it is interesting to see something like that happen, where yeah. uh, you know it's not something in the water, but it's uh, something that comes from years of cultivation. Yeah, at I think it's something universities, that, right? Exactly. Well, it's like, something that has been in the water for 35, 40 years, right? I mean, mm -hmm. clearly, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft right now uh, is investing heavily into mm -hmm. Vancouver, uh, mm -hmm. BC. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can see from sort of our perspective this whole idea of the Cascadia corridor now and Pacific Northwest becoming, you know, quite a, a viable economic region, which mm -hmm. is interesting, you know, when you talk about how does that work across borders. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's an interesting one because, you know, Microsoft came up, uh, they saw 35, 40 years of very deep video game development history in Vancouver, mm -hmm. looked at the proximity to Seattle, and I think in that case, looked at, you know, all of these different factors, you know, same time zone, uh, affordability, you know, different talent pool, but, you know, really I think the decision uh, was made primarily because we had a really, really strong video game uh, history there, and obviously people knowing how to design and think in 3D mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. exactly what you're going to need to underpin not just games in mixed reality, but you know the whole mm -hmm. whatever fourth era of computing or the fourth industrial revolution, if you want to call it mm -hmm. that way, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so that was a specific decision by a large corporation to make that investment, and obviously at that point in time, you know, the government did step in. So, okay, well in that case, let's include mixed reality into the definition of the digital media tax credit, mm -hmm. which you know, again, so it's all cyclical, I think, and that mm -hmm. partnership between private industry and uh, and the government is is really what I think you see working well in Canada, and I think other jurisdictions are also starting to mm -hmm. do similar things, right? Yeah. So disruption is always that interesting word. Uh, I guess Andrew House talked about uh, the possibility that uh, streaming of games uh, is a way for things like, say, Google or Amazon or um, uh, you know Apple to maybe move into the game business and disrupt the, console, the tr traditional console companies right. there. Um, that, that seems like a you know, possibility. Um, I somehow think that AI is going to actually impact the game industry far more yeah. than anything else on the horizon right now, right? And um, it is interesting that AI is, is being fostered in different clusters of areas now. Yeah. Like last year, NVIDIA had a contest and they had 1,400 um, identified AI startups. Uh, and this year, they had the same contest, and there were almost 3,000 now. And uh, a ton of those are in Silicon Valley. Like, uh, some of the effect of that is that the you know, AI companies are, are pulling a lot of people out of game companies into yeah. AI companies now, yeah. right? They're, they're pulling the talent out. Um, but um, you know, uh, the fact that the Silicon Valley is strong with these companies sort of makes me a little optimistic that when games and AI comes, and comes in a big way, that it'll happen here. I mean, Toronto is also very strong with AI, right? Yeah, well, in a number of areas, actually. And again, Rana this morning talked mm -hmm. a little bit about the supercluster, which is a federal mm -hmm. funding program in Canada that was mm -hmm. uh, close on a billion dollars. Um, mm -hmm. You know, BC actually led the winning entry for digital technology supercluster. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're countrywide, but, and there are specific ones, again, focused on AI and various things. So mm -hmm. um, what is interesting, I think, when you look at it from DGBC's perspective, is the kind of creative technology organization, you know, separate in some ways and distinct from mainstream tech. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess what we're doing is fighting that corner to say, look, some of these technologies are, you know, going to have their initial application in games or, you know, games are really going to kind of prove out how people want to engage with these things, mm -hmm. which in turn will have obviously that broader application in other areas of society, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if you look at crypto and then you look 15 years ago at kind of that whole play money and, <laughs> you know, the digital currency stuff, that was clearly a link there, right? And mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, it's good. I mean, again, I think that as, as different countries, jurisdictions look at this stuff, the more that they can see that relationship between the innovation and the sort of experience with user acquisition and engagement techniques that are going to be applied more broadly for the next generation to engage you know, more fully you know, across the spectrum of, mm -hmm. of things that they want to engage with, um, 
you know, that's why I think there's this competition for, for mm -hmm. trying to grow these clusters. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the AI might have been something, a reason to be optimistic about Silicon Valley and games, uh, but the cost of housing here <laughs> is well, a reason to make everybody depressed, right? I don't know. I mean, obviously, and, uh, everybody cause everybody to leave. Well, you know, Vancouver gets this, you know, the press about Vancouver is, oh, it's hugely expensive. But I mean, again, mm -hmm. I think if you look at locations in which people are building games or, you know, as again, you sort of forefront of these industrial revolutions, mm -hmm. you know, London or mm -hmm. here or Vancouver, you know, in some ways, it's not really all that much different, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think um, I would focus more on things like, um, you know, kind of a diverse and inclusive industry that we have. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously, because of changes recently in the uh, just general corporate tax rate, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of what Canada was talking about last year is sort of had to be adjusted to a degree. But again, I think, mm -hmm. you know, if you look purely at the numbers, it continues to change. So I think you really have to find that mix of, you know, great schools, great talent, great history, mm -hmm. uh, willingness to innovate, I guess. So I think to go back to the AI thing, Really briefly, you know, from my perspective, it's not only about those sort of um, salary-based incentives. You know, mm -hmm. Canadian government also provides uh, a lot of incentives when it comes to sort of grants and media funding and mm -hmm. you know uh, research stuff. Which, mm -hmm. you know, I think in a, as a result of that, you are able to experiment with new technologies like AI mm -hmm. in a you know, less high-pressure environment. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not sure, but it's certainly one of the you know the differences that I see between Silicon Valley and the environment that we're in now. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Kind of feels like a great big game of SimCity and the, the net result you want to create is a lot of jobs in the game industry. Uh, and the Canadians are sort of uh, very precisely uh, you know, uh, controlling the knobs and dials here to, to grow their city. And the Americans are sort of like taking this thing and tossing it into a big pile of soup and hoping that it's going to work. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because when you look at this stuff and you start to engage with government on this mm -hmm. level, uh -huh. you really do drill down quite quickly to the real fundamentals of your own politics, right? You know, are you into mm -hmm. big government? Are you into small government? Do you really see the, the role of government and being able to shape things like that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, which is obviously quite a deep philosophical <laughs> question. Um, mm -hmm. You know, personally, I think it is the right thing to sort of try and shape the future the way that you want to see it rather than just completely leave it open to mm -hmm. market factors. But, uh, you know, again, that's a discussion for another day, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm glad to get into it here at, uh, at Games Feet and uh, right. sort of, uh, you know, sort of make people think about things uh, on, a, on a higher level than just their own companies yeah. sometimes, right? Well, as I said, I think yeah. within all of this context of tax incentive government programs, you know, really at the heart of this industry is that innovative, innovative spark. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, you know, like I said, two guys or somebody wanting to get a computer and make a game can do it, mm -hmm. that's, I guess, what keeps us doing it, right? So the rest of it's all about, you know, embracing that spirit mm -hmm. and, and trying to grow it. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's where we are. Does anybody uh, have a question for us? So the uh, summary of the question is, you know, there's, a, there's maybe a list of 100 uh, top uh, game schools in the world, and they're only uh, focused in four countries. Um, you know, uh, what does this mean for, like, uh, whether, you know, the rest of the world yeah. is going to be catching up or not? Right? Yeah, no, I think that, that is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. In Canada, and just remember, I only moved there in 2010, so some of this is sort of hearsay from the time before you know, I, I arrived, but I know at least as far as Vancouver is concerned, you know, there was a very concerted effort by uh, some of the leading companies at the time uh, to create, for example, uh, the Center for Digital Media, which is a great school, postgraduate school um, on Great Northern Way, and that's actually an amalgamation of four of the leading uh, colleges and universities in, in British Columbia. And that was really started by a grant, I think initially from Electronic Arts, and in fact, DGBC as an organization was sort of very heavily involved in bringing that together. So, you know, you say it's a chicken and egg problem, but I actually do think that, you know, as I said earlier, the, 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 the geographic location, and if you think about it, you know, Vancouver really got its start because, you know, Don Matrick decided to make Evolution, and then that ended up turning into Distinctive, which turned into EA Canada, which, you know, so there was definitely that sort of the spark of where you can see that the industry started. And then to answer the question about the schools, I think, you know, Partly why it's important to have industry associations is because we can look after things like that relationship between academia and industry when industry itself, if you're not at the scale of electronic arts, for example, you know, and you're a smaller company, but you still want to work really closely with co-op students and you want to look at internships and you want to do all of these different types of things, you know, quite a lot of that responsibility of 
making sure that the programs at colleges and universities are appropriate for the industry, that's one of the roles of industry associations, right? So, um, you know, I think really it's not chicken and egg. It's about industry getting together and saying we really want to have, uh, you know, an ecosystem here that is sustainable for generations to come. And part of that then means funding or spending time with academic institutions to make sure that the next generation of talent is being produced, right? And actually then working with government, in our case, on immigration issues to make sure the students that graduate from there can stay within that ecosystem. So again, it's all multifaceted, but yeah, I, I see it as chicken first and chicken being industry supporting academic, academia in those particular regions, right? Good, that's all we have time for. So, right. thank you very much. Thanks, Dean. Yeah. Great to see you. Nice